two week sprints, but to have like a longer roadmap planning. So having like quarters or sprints, and that way there's not so many um, amount of work in coordination, and there's also more agency from each each project. Maybe like not yes, the sprints not being two weeks, but being a quarter would be my proposal on that. Or even a semester. And also even the year to have like a, a long scope roadmap and not be moved by small uh, targets, but to have like a clear direction. So is there anything that, like, so how frequently would you say you'd want to have sprint, each sprint be? I think the sprints could be um, for quarters, meaning that we have four sprints for yeah. a year. I, I see that cadence in, in, in other DAOs, like having seasons. And and how do you see the uh, who 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 kind of contributes to the planning of those sprints? Um, given that we have both working group stewards and common stewards, um, how how is it that we go about deciding what is going to be worked on and how we prioritize them? Well, that, that should be done on the sprint planning and it should be like a very important call where, where all the stewards, even the, the ones that um, are supposedly like advisors, um, should go to, to the sprint planning. I mean, by reducing the frequency of the call, maybe we can um, increase the importance of it and maybe making it like we like the the way we did it with sprints uh, with uh, issues. I I I don't think that Senhub is the problem. Yeah, um, you do think Senhub or no? I think Senhub is very clear. What happens maybe is that when we have a two week sprint, um, you have to like create very small issues. But if we reimagine the sprint being it a quarter, maybe you don't have to create so many issues, but you, but you can create um, less issues and, and, and that way you are more accountable of, of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, how about how do you feel, Mana? Um, I feel that there ought to be. I mean, in the proposal, it says that the um, um there's quarter objectives. Uh, so that means there would be objectives every six sprints. Um, I may have missed it or I haven't, I haven't finished yet, but I do believe there ought to be like more immediate objectives. Um, and, um, And yeah, those ought to be sort of like guided by the stewards, but also maybe allowed for contributors to. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the stewards ultimately would be the ones who, the stewards are the, the people, the contributors who have been the most um, active in that working group ought to be the ones who have a say in which, um, metrics or KPIs or, or goals to follow for the short, shorter term. But um, yeah, I just, um, 
think like a quarter is just too much time. Like, what if you don't meet the objective? Like, you'll be three months um, into. You don't. You don't. If for a quarter, we don't meet the objective. We'll be three months doing something that is not right. Um, we'll probably know if we're not going to meet them two months in, but I, I, I still feel like a more immediate type of insider feedback um, would be better. That's my, those are my two cents. Yeah, I agree. I think I think quarters are a little bit too long. Um, I think that yeah, I think that there should be maybe maybe monthly sprints. Um, uh, I would like to see kind of you know individual working groups hold their own sprint planning times and do their own ways of organizing operations internally, but then having kind of common stewards setting out these bigger goals and saying, hey, we want to get these things done and on a monthly basis and say, hey, you know, how can comms or how can gravity help out into achieving that? Um, and so we have this kind of like macro and then the micro stuff. Um, but yeah, so those are just my thoughts on it. Um, but implementing this is a little bit more difficult than I originally planned, like or thought about, because uh, really getting people engaged is the most important part, and how you can do that. Hey, Edu. Hello there. Sorry for being late again. No, you're good. You're just talking about the potential ideas around sprint planning in the context of the new stewardship set up um also i think there ought to be more importance given to the to our financial resources um it, i mean the purpose of the common stewards is to focus on work streams related to health and success of the commons and sample is going to be one of those uh work streams um but I do believe, like, the current state of, um, yeah, the current state of affairs um, necessitate that there's much more focus on either um, bringing, um, increasing the price of our token so that we can fund more projects and, and, uh, inner work and also the more integral side of it which is how do we create value for token holders um so i do believe like there ought to be more and more like focus on that um within the proposal somehow Hello, hello, Code Lucid. Um, welcome. This is a Stuart call. Uh, it's a council, and we meet every um, week, every two weeks. Um, you're welcome to introduce yourself if you feel like. All right, you're welcome to stay and listen. And if you have any questions, please use the chat or mute yourself. Back to you, Nate. Yeah, I was just going to say. Um... I was going to ask Manu, so, so what do you mean by the stakeholders within, like, including, how, how do you think we can include them? Sorry, can you repeat that? You, you mentioned stakeholders, is that correct? Uh, token holders. Like, token holders. Uh, Comments. Um, sure, that works. Within that, perhaps sample is right now uh, 
a very important part. Um, so what are some like specific things that the common stewards ought to be doing within that? Uh, that may that might be too much in the weeds or too granular for this proposal, but I do feel like the current climate of uh, you know, cutting a lot of roles, uh, uh, cutting a lot of budget, uh, it it begs to have sort of like specific actions to improve that, to either raise the price of the token or to um, somehow lease assets or create token curated content or just increase value for token holders so that they hold on to the token or um, create content that we um, that we have people create token that we don't share publicly but it, that we ask people to mint an NFT to get access to it to read it which some other DAOs have done um, yeah I based to, to summarize, I just like more specificity on how the common stewards, um, how will they focus on the specific part of, of the work streams that relate to health and success of the commons that deal with uh, financial resources and having enough money to uh, pay the contributors the current ones and future ones, and also to fund projects. Um, again, that might be out, out of the scope of the project, but I do think that it is uh, a big part of what we've been focusing on, and I'd like more clarity around that. Um, I think um, that clarity, it's once I think that clarity will be, there are two things that I feel we are sort of working on. The first one, it's the sort of the roadmap for um, next month. Um, and I think also a sample final strategy, as well as the, um, the treasury management thing that was proposed on the forum. So I think that once this sort of small holiday season that we are having at the moment ends and everyone sort of go back, we can, we will have, everyone will have clarity on, understanding will be the, what will be the actions to take um mainly because i mean sampa has been working for so long into this and so on so i think it's just a matter of time to um to be patient and also like i i like sort of acknowledge the fact that we are changing our rhythm to a slower rhythm and and i think we should aim to not we should be we should be switching a little bit the model of the dao uh, of the commons to not be um, so much about contributors and just like minimize a little bit um, that way that we always have. And I think um, encourage more participation like the ones that was posted on the forum that I shared with other stores um, a few days ago about this guy who asked for a proposal and so on. Um, so I don't know, I think it, it's okay to not have clarity now as long as we understand that this is something that's just a phase that should be um you know sort of overcome when when everyone's sort of back on track and we will have a roadmap and a strategy for sample and the treasury diversification that's those are my those are my thoughts on that yeah can you hear me hello yeah we can hear you hello there yeah. Well, so it's working. Yeah. I'm very new here, so I, I was just listening to the conversation to understand what's done here. I joined a week ago, most probably. Nice. Um, so I will inv we will have like an orientation call in 40 minutes. So um, you're welcome to like stay here, of course. And, um, and any question that you that you can write down or get from this conversation, I can easily answer to you on 40, 40 minutes on, on the community hall channel where we will have the orientation onboarding call. Oh, sweet. I will be there. Thank you. See you there. Um, you know, of course, you're welcome to stay here. Um, so yeah, back to you, man.
if you're talking manu you are muted so but like you are um no sound is coming through yeah um I guess just to to answer that, I agree. It's just a phase. I just um, um, I'm not convinced that uh, what Sample is doing will be enough. Like it will bring in revenue, yes, but will it bring enough revenue for us to um, have the outflows that we had before? You know all the contributors, the stewards, the initiatives, all of that uh, that somehow sort of like very quickly depleted our our commons pool. Um, I don't know. So I sort of like want to hope for the best with what they're doing, but prepare for the worst. So basically, keep coming up with initiatives or ways to either collectively or individually uh, for each working group or um, for the whole comments, uh, just raise funds, right? So I do agree. This is a phase. I just I, I I don't I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. Um, I'm I'm still as optimistic about this project um, as I ever have been. I just would like some, um, I guess, um, options and stats and metrics and just. I, we don't have that because we're. I mean, that's 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 a part about being being at the vanguard, right? We're pioneering. We don't know if what we're doing will work, and it's just trial and error. But um, yeah, yeah, and I, and I also just to quickly and um, that I think that also the phase of the beginning was a very naive phase. So I don't I don't yeah. actually believe that um, we should back to that. Um, outflow of funds. I think that that was a, a run of experimentation. It was it, it was bull market at even at some point. So I think that um, that I, not going back to that doesn't mean that we will not succeed. It just means that we will go slower and with a better objective and more focus on the objective, whatever that is. So um, so for me, it's just like. I don't. I hope. I actually hope we don't go back to that outflow model. Uh, we were spending so much money, um, but not actually having necessarily a, a link to what we are actually aim to do. Um, but I will hope for a, a slower or a slower pace organization that achieve more and in depth uh, results. That's my take on that only. Back to you. Sorry. Back to you, Nate. No, I mean, these, these are the kind of things that we want to talk about. And I think the pace is really important. But I also think that getting everybody moving in the right direction, you know, um, I think there are a lot of questions of like, you know, gravity has their own initiatives that they want to uh, accomplish and how they fit in with the TEC mission and goals. Is gravity kind of this thing that, you know, started in the TEC, but it has grown past it? Um, and if that's the case, that's fine. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things that we have to really take into consideration when we when it comes to planning. And so, with the new structure of the stewardship counts, uh, stewardships, um, you know, how should this work? You know, we have we have the working group stewards. You know, Manu, you know, you'll have like a little comps team, and Gravity, you'll have your your team, uh, Communitas, so on. Um, and Sampo will have theirs, and so they'll have their in own internal planning. And that's the way I do think it should work, is that the working groups themselves should have their own internal roadmaps that they work on. And then the bigger question is, is how do we have the common stewards guide these bigger initiatives to get to where we need to be? So these kind of like longer looking, um, you know, roadmaps or milestones that we need to achieve to get to where we want to be. And uh, how do we set that agenda? How do we get the working groups to participate in executing on that agenda? And then how do we form that agenda? So wh where does the stewards council come in? Where do the alumni come in? What are the relationships between those things? And I think these are all things that really need to be articulated in terms of the sprint planning process um, and, and something that we need to really hammer down. Because I think that, you know, as a, as like, if we're going to have common stewards, they really need to be looking at not just a specific working group. And this is where 
you know, Gideon has an issue and it's really hard for anybody who's going to be a common steward and also a steward of a particular working group because they're going to have kind of this mixed conflict of interest almost um, where they have to, to, to manage their own, own internal group, get the people motivated and, and with contributors where the only real, you know, compensation that we can offer is our reward system. And so um, making that reward system effective means that we have to create utility for the token, create value for the token, and a, a whole assortment of things. But but really, it's just the planning. So like, how do we get on a single vision and a single roadmap that is larger and then have the individual working groups do their own thing, what they think is best for them? So going back to the idea of the sprint planning, which I think is a topic that we, because otherwise we, I think we will uh, sort of divert into another complex topics. Um, but regarding the sprint planning um, that you guys were talking about, I think that um, having, having this very clear and honest conversation about, um, rather than having like multiple work streams to just focus on the same way when we were building the commons, um, you know, there were themes on every sprint, like this sprint, it's about um, parameters doing that, this sprint is about how your outreach achieving this. And, you know, it was sort of very focused. And I, of course, this, we, we won't have the same cadence of every two weeks, like that kind of change of, of um, topic. But I think that having this very focused, we, I felt like we, at the beginning, we focused so much in so many things and we had the bandwidth and the funds to be able to focus on so many things. And now I feel it should be the other way around. Like we should focus on one single thing. It could be a, a single thing for a month or a single thing or a single thing for two weeks, or it doesn't matter, but like one single thing um, that it's part of this roadmap. In that way, we, we don't have to rely on 20 contributors in order to achieve that single thing. And, or we can use that 20 contributors to achieve that single thing how it works but i do feel like spring planning the the biggest my biggest concern about spring planning is not only the cadence but the way we the way that i think or i believe there should be someone that it's keeping track all across the the, the next or the current spring planning that we always have to be focused on a single thing like not let's diffuse the conversation into a lot of stuff so for me, there is like I, I have this belief that um, there there should be someone owning the sprint planning in the sense of keeping everyone sort of hey remind remember that this is focused on this um, I remember that we should aim for this and this is a topic for the next month of the next two weeks um, so I guess yeah that's regarding sprint planning that's my two suggestions so to have a very clear uh, objective um, and have a very clear cadence of objective. Oh, um, it's been done. Sorry. Yeah, no, I I agree with that completely. I think that you know, I, I imagine what I, what I really originally imagined is having like you know uh, the 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 common stewards developing this kind of high level roadmap, and that roadmap it consists of a bunch of epics, and maybe you know we do you know a, a month sprint, and we have this one epic that we all focus on, and uh, the issue becomes you know. Uh, you know, if that epic has 10 issues within it, maybe we have, instead of individuals going about accomplishing a particular issue, we have working groups. And it doesn't really matter if that, that particular issue is not in your wheelhouse. I think thinking of ourselves not as like a comms team or as a gravity team, but as like a, a functioning team that is adaptable to, you know, gravity, you guys can, you know, if, if, if if we have a issue in the epic that needs work on documentation like if you can figure out how to accomplish that task on documentation even though that is not your sole responsibility but as a group you contribute that within that one month period um, in addition to what you're doing in gravity i think it's really huge um, i think that you know i feel like we say okay well i'm in gravity i'm a contributor in gravity and i'm focusing on conflict management and anything that's outside of the realm of conflict management as an individual, I can't contribute to. And I think we box ourselves uh, out of, of contributing in a lot of ways uh, based off of what working groups we've designated ourselves to. Um, and so 
I would really like to see us like work more as like a pods, you know, as, as little groups that can kind of like swarm to a specific issue, regardless of what it is and uh, seek to accomplish it. And so e each issue would be uh, accomplished by a working group or a subset of a working group. And these, you have two or three people working on that issue within that month. And by the end of it, hopefully we have a, you know, that milestone checked off and we move on to the next one and we start start to slowly gradually kind of uh, get these things done um but yeah I, th I think that individual issues within the sprint planning process are, have been a big barrier to success because um people do work on things but they don't always report on what they've worked on we have a lot of duplication of efforts not understanding who all has you know assigned themselves to that work um, you know, there, there are many aspects of the individual process and a lot of people just don't have access or time to get on ZipHub or desire to, to, to keep things updated. And so I think working more as like small groups, I think would be extremely beneficial during the sprint planning process. Um, but I don't know, maybe you have thoughts on that. Hey, Dr. Das, we are currently talking about, uh, reimagining the sprint planning process in regards to the new stewardship structure. Hey, how's it going? So if anybody has any thoughts on that, let me know or objections to that type of approach. Um, I, I was also, I was looking forward to hear, sorry to put into this, but uh, B100 uh, perspective, like from your point of view as a contributor, like what cadence for sort of planning and spring planning, since you have been also in the calls when you were recording, like, um, how how did you feel how in your mind like ideally it would be favorable for you for example as a contributor to engage in this what's that question for me or for anybody or or br100 oh yeah uh, thank you um yeah um i i really agree with what nate and, and you are saying um uh, I feel that for me, the one of the first steps should be the creation of this like bigger roadmap of the TEC. Uh, I feel, and in, in order to that, I feel that something that we might be missing as well is, you know, just like imagining uh, where do we want to be, where does the TEC want to be in in a couple of years, you know, like even we could start like, let's say 10 years from now uh, and do that exercise. Uh, maybe I, I'm pretty sure that each of us might have probably a different idea of what that looked like. Um, and, and, and maybe do the same thing with like five years, then like in, in one year, how are we going to be? And, and it would be great, I think, to, to kind of like get consensus on this because if we do this, we, it will be easier then to create a, a more specific roadmap with with epics and with objectives objectives that are aligned to to this actual actual vision of the TEC of, of what it's of what we want it to be. So for me, those are kind of like important things, right? Because at the end, is what we are working on, and and that will be like the. Um, um, yeah, that would be like the the energy behind all the projects and all the initiatives and and all the contributions that that are done like in a more smaller scope in a in a more like daily base. Everything aiming towards that those bigger goals. So those bigger things, I feel, are things that we we're still missing and that we've missed. I I feel like uh, through uh, since a long time. So so yeah, I I would probably focus on on that um i've heard especially during the summer a lot of times that there's been this initiative of creating a roadmap but i don't think like concrete steps have been taken on so i would be i would like to to see that that happen and, and help that happen so yeah i think that's what i have to say for now Yeah, I the the big you mentioned you mentioned the the ten year five year roadmap. It's really interesting because 
when we did the original MVB, we had this kind of, you know, uh, idea of this broad uh, mission vision statement. Um, values have pretty much, you know, remained the same. And I really like that it's been pretty much static in that way. But the mission and vision, we started off as being really broad. And we had a different community uh, composition back then. And we did a revision. Once the community grew, uh, we changed the mission and vision uh, and, and changed again. And, you know, the second iteration of the MVV was a little bit more detailed than the initial one. So it, it starts off really broad and then it gets a little bit narrower. And perhaps it's time to do another revision of the MVV with this new set of community members again to even get it more detailed and, and more granular. Um, because right now it's still kind of, you know, it's still broad. We have, you know, we want to be a shelling point. Well, you know, we, we all have this idea, our own ideas of what a shelling point is and what that actually means. And so not having a detailed um, description of exactly how to implement the shelling point is becomes a problem when we're trying to uh, uh, enact and implement different initiatives within the community. And so uh, we all have this vision of what, what it should be and we're all moving in different directions. And so being more specific about our mission and vision, uh, I think would be a really good first step in terms of guiding a roadmap towards where we wanna go. Um, and perhaps, you know, this is how we do it. You know, we, we start, start to get more fine tuned with our mission and vision statements and move from there but um i i definitely agree that having that exercise of a 10 year five year one year and being aggressive about it you know uh, just saying hey this is let's, let's have a really aggressive one year and then the five year and 10 year can vary but let's see the differences uh as time moves forward with different compositions of community members Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily to have like a super specific roadmap for the next 10 years. I mean, I don't think we could do that. Uh, but at least to have this idea, right, this this vision of, of the TC, I think could really help. Like, for example, right now I was checking on the mission right now. Uh, and it says like, enable the creation of ethical, safe, resilient and diverse economic systems to benefit societies around the world. Um, if you if you ask me like for me that really sounds more like like the mission of the TEC and not really like the place we want to be in the future you know and and it's kind of fun cuz like on the mission it says our goal is to become a shielding point for the token engineering community for me that's actually more of a vision right like that's the place we want to become that's the place we want to be so yeah, it might be good to maybe revisit this the the MBB uh, at some point as a starting point in order to to yeah make it just make it more updated right make it more specific towards we want to go now. I agree, and so in in terms of you know developing that type of roadmap i think the as, as we begin to implement the the new stewardship structure um maybe that is kind of the first task of the common stewards is to, to start to facilitate the uh, new mvv revision process and then kind of see where we're at in terms of you know getting everybody's input on a five-year uh, vision and a 10-year vision and just see how different everybody's uh, visions are for what they think TEC should be and how it should work, um, you know, from people who really care about the field of token engineering. And so maybe that's, that even includes stakeholders and token holders and, and making sure that we, we get that messaging out there uh, and to kind of get that feedback, perhaps we start a poll list for that. Um, and, and, then, and then really kind of just set out the short-term roadmap um and once we do that i think that you know we can start to coordinate those epics around the, those issues and and start creating milestones and as far as the the working groups are concerned i think you know i i i think most of us are in agreement that they should remain completely autonomous to do what they need to do 
Um, and, you know, I, I get worried sometimes, but like I, I, it's one of those things I had to, to kind of really back up on because I was like, you know, gravity, for example, Wonka and Durgadas, you guys, you know, have uh, been contributing so much to gravity and have become this kind of independent entity. And as much as I want to like reel you back in to the help of the TEC, you guys have done your own thing. You are on your own, you kind of, you kind of you're heading in your own direction. And it's not for the TEC to decide what you guys do. And, and one of the things is, is like, do you have interest in participating in those kind of longer term roadmap uh, issues and contributing to those issues? Or do you feel like you should be, um, you're, you're independent now and kind of separated from the TEC altogether? Um, those are the types of questions I have when it comes to the working groups and them being autonomous and, and, and how we keep people aligned. And so those are kind of, you know, adjacent issues to the sprint planning process that I, I get kind of concerned about. But uh, perhaps do you have some thoughts around that, Wonka or Dirgana? Well, you know, my thing is always about the culture, right? So it's, um, so I feel like in a group that's a lot more focused on trust creation and conflict management, that's a bit more aligned with the sort of concerns that I have. I don't care at all about search and engineering. What I care about is the commons that's connecting all of them. Do you know what I mean? So the fact that it just happened to be token engineering, that was the first thing that the common stack did, that's great. So now, you know, gravity is maybe the second thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I don't know, you know, I don't know how closely aligned we are, you know, with that formally, but certainly I think uh, we're focused on the commons a bit more. And, and um, yeah, it's also true that, you know, just being, you know, financially independent is going to be a thing because, you know, the token engineering commons is obviously talking a lot about, you know, potentially running out of money. So, <laughs> you know, these are all things that we need to also, you know, consider. And even during uh, our call, um, I think yesterday, um, our coordination call, you know, one happened to be talking about how, you know, if you've got that like psychology group that we've got going, you know, hey, why don't you look at seeing what it's like to be funded independently, you know, and we're starting that right from the beginning, right? So there's a certain things about that too. And plus, it's also true that from my perspective, you know, um, the uh, there's certain things about the token engineering commons that are stuck in things that I would sort of change if it was up to me. So, you know, having a new uh, group to kind of talk about uh, is also, you know, kind of part of that. So, you know, it's it's just interesting to see you know, uh, those different things. I also see DAOs like as fractals. And the good thing is that um, we can be truly autonomous. And also, I, I really like um, the approach of commons. And I always think on um, Ostrom's eight principle of nested enterprises. And that's how I see like uh, the project of gravity since the beginning. And uh, totally. it's, um, we are like a, a fishing net and we are um, receiving and we want to receive inputs from people in the community in the Web3 space and be able to pivot them to the experts um, that can help them with their technical issues and we help them with their conflict and trust creation issues. And really, one of the things that I always think on, on why gravity is so tied to the TEC right now and will be in the future is um, that I, I think that um, because we are being funded by the TEC in the moment that we launch our token, we need to somehow compensate and reward the TEC for, for um, in a, a retroactive way for what um, they have helped us bootstrap our project. And um, I always think of gravity as an ethical, safe, resilient, and economic system that benefits societies around the world. So that's why I think that the vision of the TEC 
like um holds gravity um in in the direction that we are going because the direction that we want to take in gravity is to become uh an a, a, our own economy and a, an ethical safe resilient and diverse economy so i think that we are being yeah born from the tc but we can continue working with the tc um all of the time for example if we receive an input from a community um having a conflict and we identify that the conflict is not only um human related we can pivot to the tc or to the token engineering academy um to help them with the more technical issues so we don't want to be an expert of everything but we want to like pivot and and be like a funnel from the information um on on the web on the web3 space but yeah um it's it's i think this is a super interesting um conversation we're having yeah and uh just i want to welcome cesar um if you want to introduce yourself we are in our stewards council right now we're discussing the um planning process in terms of the new structure of the stewardship uh, structure. So um, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please do so now. Um, yeah, welcome. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I'm really uh, want to learn about uh, token engineering. So yeah, I'm very uh, excited about this. Uh, I'm from Mexico. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, um, so right now we're just talking about the sprint planning process and the roles of uh, of the different working groups. And so, um, in in response to what you were saying, Wonka, uh, in terms of uh, contributions to the commons, do you see it being you know a part of in addition to the the initiatives that you have within Gravity? Do you see the potential of uh, coordinating the human capital within gravity to help out with uh, achieving certain issues or milestones that we set within the sprint planning process that contribute to the commons. Do you see, do you see being able to accomplish that in addition to the work that you're doing in gravity, even if it's not conflict management related? Or is that something outside of the... Well, I, I think um, we can play an important role us as as um an funnel of information and i think that would could also like articulate with um the intention of the tc i think that um right now i don't have the answer but i still i i think that the the boundaries um can can be flexible enough so that there's autonomy, but at the same time, um, coordination between between both groups. And um, yeah, I, I also think that that um, me as a person, besides from gravity, I want to continue um, being engaged with the TC. So maybe I don't know if it would be good, good to like say, okay, maybe I am in gravity, but for other things, um, like I can play a role in the in the TC, um, not being um, only um, representing gravity, but also being as I have been a steward on the community, and I think I I have always so, seen. Um, those two things very different, like my, my participation in gravity and my stewarding in the TC. So I don't think that the two things like compete between each other. I see everything very liquid and very flexible. Okay. Yeah. And, and does anybody else have any thoughts on spirit planning process topics? things we need to explore before we start to implement things. I would sure um, like go ahead. I would sure uh like us to explore um instead of the uh, way we've been 
dealing with things, maybe an expanded version of that, including some liberating structures like what, so what, now what, which is basically a, a sprint retrospective, but would also take certain f formal, you know, ideas in, in, into account. So maybe Jeremy could help with that. Also, I'm aware that, um, you know, Kinefin works pretty well with an agile framework. So, um, you know, these are the kinds of things I would like to see, um, you know, modified uh, as a part of uh, what we're dealing with. So that that's all I would say. Um, so I don't know if uh, anyone else wants to comment something. Otherwise, I want to just quickly, uh, the last nine minutes that we have, about something, so I will come down and just in case anyone else wants to add something on the conversation topic five. Four, I three. have one question. Yeah. Um, are we going to have the community call, right? It doesn't matter who, who comes, we, we'll still do it. And if we end up sh um, like early, it doesn't matter, but let's make it for the people who, that arrive. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. So on, on, slides. On, that, on that note, I, I mean, there is nothing in Communitas, so I, I hide the, the slide for Communitas just in case um, you will be like, that's for be a skip this week. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with everyone, uh, since we have quite a crowd here, is on the chat of the stewards. I shared a uh, forum post that was posted today, uh, yesterday, sorry. Um, and also two things that and Angela's post on the forum uh, that she provided the sort of report of the spending and, and the results of the uh, T Fundamentals budget that was funding that she received. And um, just for the like, sake of also her being a uh, token holder and for the sake of the other post of someone who is seeking for feedback, if any of you can just provide feedback, comment on that, show some support. Um, the first one, the rationality of this is that the first one is one of the like, few times in, in this year that we have received a also from someone outside the organization and they receive some i deserve some attention uh it's not a perfect proposal it doesn't need to be but it's just to provide feedback on there and the second one uh very similar uh, chain of thoughts angela provide uh, a report on t fundamentals and i think it's nice if we can acknowledge that so if you guys can take five minutes just write a comment um i think it will be appreciated by these two folks Yeah, that is, that is really important. Um, so if you get a chance to engage on the forum, please, please do. Um, I think this is one of the most important vehicles for communication that we have. And uh, even if uh, you just read over it and, and say good job or I, I like it, I think it's really, really beneficial to, to where we're going. So um, yeah, please do get involved in that. Um, with that being said, we have sample working group after this call. We have our TEC orientation. Um, and then we have our community call right after that. So um, if you're uh, around, please update the slides if you can. Um, and then are you going to the orientation call? I do. Yes, I am. OK, cool. And then yeah, sample is right after. Um, yeah, so if anybody has any comments on this t particular topic, um, I think we can start a discussion in the forum as well. So if maybe I, I'll start a thread and we can comment on it from there um, and kind of go through the advice process because I do think uh, getting sprint planning back in motion is going to be very, very important and how we implement these stewards restructuring is very important to start uh, executing on as well. So um, yeah. Uh, if anybody has any last minute thoughts, please, this is the time for it. And uh, if not, uh, you want to give a countdown? I do. Uh, I just want to invite uh, Cesar and um, and Cora de Lucid. You can join your additional call if you have any question. And yeah, thanks for joining. All right. Five, 
four, three, two, one. All right. Um, I will see your intention of call. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See you later. See you. Bye. See you. Thank you.